The third, by the way, again, will tell you whether it's major or minor. And the word, if you're writing these down in your glossary here, the word is quality, the chord quality. If someone says, yeah, what quality of chord? And you just said D, that's not good enough. Well, D, that probably means major, but you're gonna wanna say D minor, D diminished. That tells you the quality of the chord. It's not how good or bad it is. It's not that type of quality, <laughs> unless you associate with diminished as being bad. I, but here's a D chord. Here's our third degree. I'm gonna show you the sus two. From the three, you go down a whole step. You hear this all the time in popular music, this. When you hear stuff like that. So again, you can see this could be pretty, uh, a pretty big study you know, as far as chord studies go. But the theory is here for you. That's what's important. Uh, play this all with me, please. C, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and half. I could do it. I could do it that way faster than thinking about each letter name. You know, you could start on any note. You could start on a F. For me, it's kind of a series of whole steps and half steps versus necessarily thinking about each letter name. So I'm thinking about the interval combination. And again, the interval is the distance from one note to the next. diatonic jamming. You know, when somebody says, hey, this song is in the key of F, you say, oh, F, okay, I can do it. And you're just gonna have fun and jump right in. This one string approach is really nice. Again, otherwise you'd be working out your fingerings, which is great. Especially when you get want to get more technical, you're like, oh, I don't want to be limited to speed. Then that's where you want to focus on the G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. Then you learn your scales, and that's gonna... And that's... Once again, last week was pretty basic. We introduced a chromatic scale, half steps, whole steps. A lot of us are playing fretted instruments, so that's one fret is a half step, two frets is our whole step. Interval basically means the distance from one note to the next note. Not only the numbers, but also the, the names that are commonly associated. So I could say perfect fifth, and you know, you know what I'm talking about. Or I could say uh, diminished fifth. I could say major seven, and those are the interval names. And again, you'll be writing that. I might, I might use numbers. I might say, okay, let's play a flat seven from G, and you'll know that that's an F. And what's important both is that you can that you know the note and that you can play it on your instrument. You did do your homework, and that, and I'm just gonna go through a few of these um, quickly. It's all written on the sheet, but just the process. It's just a little review for you. Whole step from D is E. We gotta follow this formula. Whole step from E is F sharp. And again, even right here, I could talk about this. We don't want to call it G flat. The rule is you want to have one of each letter name. So that's the general rule is when you're writing out your scales, when do I call it a sharp or when do I call it a flat? 
Well, remember the rule, have one of each letter name. This is dealing with the major scale. When we deal with other scales later, it's actually the same concept. <laughs> so, okay, whole, whole, half, here's the formula. I really want you to memorize this. Whole, I mean half, that's G. We have a whole step, that's A. We need another whole, that's B. We need another whole from B, and from B here, half step is C, so that would be, it's not written here, but here, C sharp, okay? And then finally, a half step back to D. The other thing is, yes, you should end on the same note you begin with. <laughs> you should not end on a D flat or D sharp if we are starting on D. And this is where we're dealing with the term, the key. If some, someone said, yeah, I'm in the key of D, what they're referring to is, hey, this is coming from a D major scale, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. In all 12 scales, none of them are identical. They all have to be different, and that's what makes them special. But they all follow the same formula, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Two holes and a half, three holes and a half. So remember what a piano looks like. Two black keys, three black keys. Well, that follows that major scale formula. Whole, whole, half, that's the two, and then three black keys, whole, 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 half, okay? So when you go to a piano and, and you were to play all the white keys, that would be a C major scale. That's the only key that is just all the white keys on the piano. It's not that easy for us on the guitar. You have to kind of know your notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C. I'm playing it this way, uh, vertically going down across the strings. It's a little bit trickier. What we demonstrated last time was to play it on the length of the string. I like it that way, laterally. You can see it like a piano, or maybe a flute, hopefully. You have C, and of course, you gotta know your notes to some degree. <laughs> um, that's a given, is that you gotta know your open strings, and I know we're all still working on that, perhaps. E, A, D, G, B, E, but we have a B note here, and then this is C. So if you were to follow this formula, play this all with me, please. C, whole step, whole step, half step, Whole step, whole step, whole step, and half. I could do it, I could do it that way faster than thinking about each letter name. You know, you could start on any note. You could start on a F. And for me, it's kind of a series of whole steps and half steps versus necessarily thinking about each letter name. So I'm thinking about the interval combination. And again, the interval is the distance from one note to the C, next. D, e. What we did last time, I was strumming chords. This is what we're going to talk about today, chord theory. But I was strumming some basic chords in the key of C. And you already have the worksheets for today's lecture. But um, and you can noodle around the scale. You can do a little bit of jamming here in a few different keys. Is a loop pedal. So what I'm all I'm doing is looping a really basic chord sequence here. Um, we're gonna go through this today. One five six four. One five six four. And this is kind of the next topic: our common chord progressions after we get through the chord theory. But basically, in the key of C, we want to translate these to numbers. C is the one because we're in the key of C. G is the five. A is the six, and D is the four. As if we were assigning these, or you can see that on that major scale sheet. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. C, G, A to F. So I'm gonna loop that. But how do we know what chords? How do we know if the chords major, minor, diminish, augmented? We're gonna go through that in a second, but let's just do a little jamming in a few different keys, just to warm up and have fun. Um, three, four. Rockers looping and just scale. Major scale. One, four, five. Five. And, and that's how I'm thinking, just to give you G and half step. Whole step. Whole step. Whole step.
we're singing G. So anyways, we could jam all day. This, And I'm hoping you're enjoying the jamming portion because I do think this is a great way to learn your music theory is by hearing it and using it. I will have a little bit more names to it and especially today, the chord sequences. So this next portion today I want to talk about is this is all about chords as a matter of fact that up here so here and this is on the sheet but i am going to walk you through this is the chord theory or chords in, in the key of c but first of all we should probably have some formulas and these chords that we're dealing with today are called triads and this might be erased from the board but it should all be on the sheet triads are three note chords typically these the the triads we're going to deal with are called tertian triads which means third, built thir on thirds, stacked thirds. So we're gonna have a major, minor, diminished, well diminished, and augmented. Usually I put aug. And they all have formulas. These all are stacked thirds. For the major, it's one, three, and five. Um, and that means we're gonna use the major scale as our template here. That means two whole steps and then one and a half, the distance. That's, that equals what will be called a major triad or a major chord. A minor chord, these are just formulas by the way. Minor chord, you flat the third and you keep the one and the fifth degree the same. And that formula is now one and a half. And then this becomes two, so it just, it reverses. Um, I know this is a little bit mathematical here. And then one to the flat three, and then a flatted fifth for the diminished. And that is one and a half, and also one and a half, the distance again. So we'll be calculating the distances in a second. And then augmented, one, the three, and the sharp five. The sharp five meaning augmented, we'll talk about the interval name um, in a second, but you, major equals two, one and a half. We'll do this on our instruments. Minor equals one and a half and two. Diminished equals one and a half and one and a half. And then augmented is two whole steps and two whole steps. Take, let's take G. So start on G, we go up two whole steps. That's, I, okay, so we got Fret-wise, it's third fret and then seventh fret. Because remember, a whole step is two frets, so that's a total of four frets, three to the seven. So that's, if you want to know your letter names, G to B. But right now, I'm actually just talking the distance, okay? One to the three, and then now we need that fifth degree, and that's one and a half steps from the three. So we have... go backwards. And I know you all know that big G chord there. And that's it broken up into single notes, believe it or not. And you're probably wondering, wait, why is this G then? That's six notes. That's not three notes. But when you examine it, and a lot of guitar players don't examine it, you know, they just like, hey, I know that's G, my teacher told me, they said it on YouTube, but it's actually G, B, D, G, D, and G again. You have three G's in here, believe it or not. Three, three G's, two D's, and one third, one B. So you have G, B, D, G, D, and G. I should grab my other guitar here. But that's why sometimes, uh, you'll play a G chord like this, G like this. Well, I'm like, well, hey, that's okay. It's still G because now you're doubling the third instead of doubling the fifth. So as long as you have the same three notes, you can have many different possible fingerings for the chord, especially on the guitar, because we have the option of doubling uh, the same note or tripling the same note, the root. So that's why. Anyway, anyways, please take your, this week, um, if you're a guitar or uke player, Take some of those chords that you already know really well. Like, that's D. Well, I have D, A, D, F sharp. And then you'll see why they why they are. Then, then you'll learn, oh, 
The next step, of course, would be, oh, I could flat the third to make it minor. Or an A major, A minor. You'll, you, now you'll know why that one note changes because of that third degree. You'll learn how to make a chord major to minor and then diminished. Meaning this, once you learn your basic shapes, you won't even need to open up a chord book anymore. You'll know your formulas, which is really important to know. And here's a chord. If you, I'm playing it as a bar chord. And you all are going. Okay, that's the arpeggio. It's gonna sound good because that's the broken chord. That's G major. I'm just, again, breaking it up into single notes versus building the chord right now. Flat your third, and now it's minor. Only that one note changes, the middle note. And here's a chord. If you, I'm playing it as a bar chord. And you all are going... the arpeggio. It's going to sound good because that's the broken chord. Okay, and you can goof around with your G minor. Now let's go on. I want you to hear these colors. Diminish. One flat three flat five. So again, I think of it like the minor, but take that fifth degree and flat it, meaning go down one fret. It's pretty spooky, pretty haunting, that diminished one, flat a three, and notice that's three. Augmented, I want to show you the augmented triad from the, starting with the major. So let's go back to one. Okay, and that was, uh, the frets were three, seven, and 10. Again, the distance was two whole steps, one and a half steps, but now we have to take that fifth degree and sharpen. Sus two and sus four. And that's short for suspended. You'll just see sus. And a sus two equals the formula, the one, two, and the five. And a sus four equals one in the fourth degree in the five. And you might have to just, if we are just spelling it in the key of C, um, a sus two, and a sus means you basically no longer have the third. These are not what I call tertian triads anymore because they're not stacked thirds. So this is a whole step, right? Two, and then now, before three to five was one and a half, but we're gonna talk very briefly about this. A sus two is you replace the three with the two. So on a C chord, it'd be C, D, G. And a sus four would be C, F, and G. So again, this idea of a suspended chord is that you replace the third. The third, by the way, again, will tell you whether it's major or minor. And the word, if you're writing these down in your glossary here, the word is quality, the chord quality. If someone says, yeah, what well, quality of chord? And you just said D, that's not good enough. Well, D, that probably means major, but you're gonna wanna say D, D diminished. That tells you the quality of the chord. It's not how good or bad it is. It's not that kind of quality, unless you associate with diminished as being bad. And, but here's a D chord. Here's our third degree. I'm gonna show you the sus two. From the three, you go down a whole step. You hear this all the time in popular music, this. When you hear stuff like that. So I, I had that sus two, that open E here on the D chord, in it was replacing the third. So the two is a whole step below the third. That's a good way to remember it. Major, sus two. Sus four, right here. Sus four replaces the third with the fourth, which is, as you know in your major scale formula, three to four is the half step, okay? That's where the half step is. So you just see, you just grab your third. Here it is on A chord, A 
major, A sus 4. A major, A sus 2. And quite often in pop music, again, folk rock pop, you'll hear it kind of creating a nice sort of melody. And I kind of showed it to you in context. Here's A minor. I'm just gonna do a little finger picking here. A minor. A sus2. So if you ask me, well, is that major or minor? I'd say, well, sus2 is neither major nor minor. But because of the context, it sounds more minory because I'm putting it. But now listen to it with a major chord. A major. A sus2. A sus4. So these sus chords are really beautiful, and again, uh, you know, if you're a songwriter or just want to fancy up a song, try adding some sus chords. What are the chords in the key of C? Well, the good news is this. Once you learn the chords in the key of C, you know them for every key because you already did your homework and wrote out all 12 major scales. So what we're going to do is translate those because it all the formula holds true. So now let's take a look at the key of C and go ahead and write out... Chord theory, we take a C scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. This key of C is beautiful. Well, when we are building chords, these are triads, we take every other note, the one, the three, and the five. And this is why I'm stacking it this way. C, E, G, okay, I'm taking every other note. D, F, A, one, three, five. E, G, B. And I'm saying one, three, five loosely here, liberally, because we don't know if it's, a, but that's what we're gonna determine, is the quality of the chord. Is it major, is it minor, or is it diminished, or is it augmented? A, C, E, every other note, A, C, and then it would just go C to E, A, and then B is B, D, and F. Okay, now I, I treat it like it's addition here. C to E is, now we can look at the formula, two whole steps. E to G is one and a half. And again, look at the, your, your chord formulas, triad formulas. Two one and a half equals C major. And all you need to write is C. You don't need to write M, A, J, M, A, J, 7, or M, I'm sorry. M, A, J, 7, or M, anything else. Just write C. And then everything else that's major. D to F, one and a half steps. Okay, and then you have to write the chord formula. Okay, so let's start with the chord formula. Okay, so D to F, one and a half steps. Okay, so now we can look at the formula. And again, if you're on if you're just playing single notes, you don't have to arpeggio. You can just kind of watch. But again, many of you, especially you, or guitar players, hopefully already know C, D minor, E minor, F. That dreaded F chord, I know. Nice. Those are the chords in the key of C. C, D minor, so far, E minor, F, and yeah, if you're playing single notes, you might go C, E, G, D, F, A, E, G, B, F, A, C. Okay, break it up into arpeggios if you don't have the capability of layering yourself. Uh, even though there are cool pedals, you can do that. Loop pedals. Okay, let's continue on. We have the four chords. We need a couple more here. G, B, D. What's the distance? That's two. I hope you guys understand the formulas here. We have two and a B to D. Half and a whole. One and a half. Two and a half. Hey, that's major again. Major, minor, minor, major, major. Okay, A. A to C. One and a half. Two and a half. Three and a half. Four and a half. Five and a half. Six and a half. Seven and a half. Eight and a half. Nine and a half. Ten and a half. Eleven and a half. Twelve and a half. Thirteen and a half. Fourteen and a half. Fifteen and a half. Sixteen and a half. Seventeen and a half. Eighteen and a half. Nineteen and a half. Twenty and a half. Twenty-one and a half. Twenty-two and a half. Twenty-three and a half. Twenty-four and a half. Twenty-five and a half. Twenty-six and a half. Twenty-seven and a half. Twenty-eight and a half. Twenty-nine and a half. Twenty-ten and a half. Twenty-eleven and a half. Twenty-twelve and a half. Twenty-thirteen and a half. Twenty-fourteen and a half. Twenty-fifteen and a half. Twenty-sixteen and a half. Twenty-seventeen and a half. Twenty-eighteen and a half. Twenty-nineteen and a half. Twenty-twenty 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 and a half. Tw
Basically, these are your chords in the key of C. And I bet you all know all of them, except for the B diminished. <laughs> a lot of people don't know B diminished, and that's okay, because I don't either. All right, I'm joking. I do know B diminished. Uh, B diminished is this chord. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and G ma C major. I forgot what key we're in. I'll do that again. C major so you could hear it without me talking. C, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and then the B dim as a seven chord, and then back to C. We can go backwards, sounds equally beautiful. A minor, G, F, E minor, D minor, and back to C. We can strum it. So again, you can see this could be pretty, uh, a pretty big study as far as chord studies go. But the theory is here for you. That's what's important for now. I do have other PDFs I'm happy to send out that, that has more information. Um, but I hope now that you all know this, this is, what the, this is called the harmonized scale, by the way. Major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. And then, of course, the final would be just C again. I, I omitted that. But that's called the harmonized scale. But in order to get the E and the G, the F and the A, in order to get these, uh, basically we're just starting on the third degree. Stack them and vertically the structures, we determine the distance with what we know from whole steps and half steps to finally, and looking at the chord formula sheet to come up with this harmonized scale. This is what, here's what we have to do now. Um, we have to label these, the one, the two chord, the three, and now I'm using the Roman numeral system, capital and lowercase essentially, um, to help show with the numbers, oh, this one does get that symbol there, to help show the quality of the chord. So the summary here, the one, the four, and the five, and again, this is all on that PDF. The summary here, the one, the four and the five are major happy chords. So if you want to write a happy song, play with one, four, five. In the key of C, it'd be Four or five. In the key of C, the scale would match these chords, the harmonized scale. And now is the summary here: one, four, five are major, two, three, six are minor. D minor is a two, E minor is a three, A minor is a six. Listen to those together. What scale do I use? Guess what I'm going to say? The C major scale, because you're still in the key of C. I'm still going to just play D minor, E minor, A minor in that order. Um, let's see. Three, four. Starting on C, I'm going. So again, music theory is so amazing um, how that works. So like before that scale sounded happy because I was in playing major chords. So what I'm talking about is how things can kind of take color and shape 
uh, the sound of it because of the, the background. You know, the background is minor. Guess what? Your melody, your scale is going to sound more minor even though we're still using this. Just like I'm looking at the gray sky today. You know, the background is darker and gray. So even if I played a major scale, <laughs> it might be pop. The major scale might be nice. And that might sound pretty and kind of major. But when you hear it against the minor chord, it sounds more minor -y. And we're going to talk more about minor scales in upcoming lessons, harmonic minor, even melodic minor, pentatonic, blues, all these different flavors. But really right now, this is the foundation. Today's one of the most important lessons that I think you'll, you'll find is just understanding the harmonized scale, how to take a major scale, come up with major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. And of course, for those interested in jazz, we can add the jazz notes, the sixth degree, the seventh degree, but still, this is the foundation. These are the triads. Um, I'm really big on triads. Triads are the, the building blocks. One, five, six, four. I'm in the key of D. One, five, six, four. And a, a musician says, hey, this song is, I wrote this brilliant song. It's one, five, six, four. And then you, well, brilliant, it's very common, but you'd go D, A, B minor, G. Very popular progression. D, A, B minor, G. And I'm just kind of, you know, again, but that's a very common progression. Let it be by the Beatles. One, five, six, four, four, one. You know, just to be able to speak in that. And of course, be able to play it. <laughs> you know, uh, that's important too. And then we'll talk about transposing because uh, you might say, but I can't sing it in that key. And I say, okay, well, let's play it in the key of, let's try in the key of F. And then this is the importance of it. Then you can say, oh, one, now I got F, five is C. And I'll see y'all next week. Have a good week.